Hey, I believe it's better if I try to draw this stuff out so you get a better visual and it's not just me saying a bunch of words that seem to go over your head. So I broke down the whole metabolic process that is in regards to neurotransmitters such as dopamine and norepinephrine to epinephrine. Epinephrine is just another way of saying adrenaline. So you got noradrenaline, which turns into adrenaline. And that's like the ultimate byproducts. Um, initially, you have the L-phenylalanine, turns into phenylthylamine. This right here has to do with your feelings of attraction towards others. And the monoamine oxidase B enzyme plays a large role in breaking down the phenylthylamine, which is actually psychoactive. If you order online um, some phenylthylamine extract and you take it with the MAOB inhibitor like hordenine, that can cause psychoactivity for a short period of time. Eldoprinol is prescribed as a monoamine oxidase B enzyme inhibitor, which seems to be very effective for extending lifespan expectancy in rodents. And they've started undergoing clinical trials in humans to make sure that this can effectively extend lifespan expectancy. And there's theories as to how it works so effectively, and I believe it has to do with increasing striatal dopamine. There's different mechanisms by which you can increase striatal dopamine, which has to do with the striatum, which has to do with voluntary movement, the substantia nigra increases striatal dopamine when it becomes more active by inhibiting the monoamine oxidase B enzyme by increasing the activity of the 5-hydroxytryptamine 1B serotonin receptor and increasing the CB1 cannabinoid, uh, cannabinoid receptor. This is how THC gets broken down in your body and you can know how to interact with its metabolism. This right here is how piperin can effectively reverse your tolerance to THC by interacting with cytochrome P453A4 enzyme, which creates the metabolic re reaction of 9,10-alpha epoxidation. It's similar to the epoxidation that carbamazepine undergoes through 10,11-epoxidation to make the epoxide metabolite. And piperin is known to increase area under the curve plasma concentrations and maximum plasma concentrations of carbamazepine and its epoxide metabolite, which tells you it works on this mechanism of metabolism for delta-9 THC, which undergoes 11-hydroxylation by a different enzyme, which creates a metabolite three to four times more psychoactive than regular delta-9 THC. The 11-hydroxy metabolite is more prevalent with edibles. So if you're eating edibles, you're more likely to have this metabolite from more extensive metabolism by the liver. And an alkaloid found in black pepper, piperidine, can also um, be a very useful tool for being a precursor to a known illicit substance, PCP, which even has the piperidine ring, the naturally occurring alkaloid you found in black pepper, becomes phenylcyclohexyl piperidine through a chemical process from some form of extraction to make the derivative PCP. So looking at this whole entire metabolic reaction right here, breaking down L-phenylalanine into phenylthylamine and L-phenylalanine into L-tyrosine, which becomes tyramine, which gets broken down by this enzyme, which a lot of known enzyme inhibitors are known to um, interact with the hydroxylation of by this enzyme. Um, I don't know if this undergoes hydroxylation specifically, but it's broken down into dopamine, same as L-DOPA 
getting broken down gets broken down into dopamine l-dopa coming from l-tyrosine and you got this metabolic reaction right here which is aromatic acid sorry aromatic amino acid hydroxylase or the addiction sorry the addition of a hydroxyl group uh there's also another metabolic reaction which breaks down tyrosine known to increase dopamine levels like the phosphorylation which is the addition of a phosphorus uh, element within the chemical structure to make tyrosine phosphotyrosine a metabolite tyrosine also undergoes solvation which is the addition of sulfur and as I was saying in my last video this is a methyl group right here and um, this right here is the metabolic reaction which breaks down the noradrenaline into regular adrenaline which all comes from dopaminergic uh, precursors so with this metabolic reaction you get phenyl ethanolamine in methyl transferase which tells you it's like an addition of a methyl group at the nitrogen element um, these are listed in AOB inhibitors. Um, L-deprenyl has been used as an anti-aging drug to extend lifespan expectancy in rodents. Tyrosine is also a precursor to coenzyme Q10, which has been looked at as a treatment for dementia or Alzheimer's, which they find people with those kind of conditions have low levels of this naturally occurring coenzyme Q10 which plays a pretty big factor in how um, neurotransmitters function and factors into circulation for those with poor circulatory problems uh, that is a result of Alzheimer's or dementia and you can see right here uh, psilocybin in mushrooms gets broken down into psilocin which is the removal of a phosphorus group or um, a phosphorus element. As you can see in the chemical structure of psilocybin right here, it's at the oxygen molecule. So you got O phosphoryl 4 hydroxy uh, in dimethyltryptamine. So this phosphoryl group gets removed from the oxygen molecule to become to make psilocybin become 4-hydroxy-DMT which is structurally similar to our brain's naturally occurring dimethyltryptamine which I cannot remember the specific chemical compound name for but anyway, as you can see, there's many different met metabolic reactions like the aromatic L-amino acid decarboxylase, which is like, I'm thinking the removal of a carboxyl group, which plays into the factor of how L-dopa is broken down into dopamine. And there's a number of different things to consider how L-phenylalanine becomes phenylthylamine how L-phenylalanine becomes L-tyrosine, which becomes tyramine, which becomes dopamine, and L-tyrosine becomes L-dopa. L-dopa is also the precursor to melanin, which is having to do with your skin pigmentation. Piperin seems to enhance your production of melanin, which implies that piperin has some sort of effect on your L-dopa levels, but that's just a theory. So anyway, this is all I have for right now. I think it's really good if I draw this stuff out in different diagrams so you get more of a visual with what I'm talking about. Anyway, you have a great, great day. This is all I have for right now.